Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can be alerted when new content is released. Enjoy the video. So then, if you wanted to create a new personal reality, a new life, you'd have to change your personality. Which means you'd have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. For many years, I have had a lot of autoimmune issues that have shown up for me starting in my 20s. You'd have to become aware of your unconscious habits and behaviors and even what you say and modify them. It started with food allergies, many, many food allergies. Um, it got to the point that it became really painful just to drink water. And then you'd have to look at those emotions that keep you anchored to the past and decide if those emotions belong in your future. So most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. We literally have to become someone else. In other words, thoughts are the language of the brain, and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. So most people have experiences in their life that brand them emotionally. They feel fear, they feel anger, they feel bitterness, they feel frustration, they feel insecurity. And those emotions then become part of their identity. So once they think certain thoughts that turn on certain circuits in their brain that are equal to their insecurity and then they feel insecure, the moment they feel insecure, they think more insecure thoughts, which makes more chemicals for them to feel insecure. And the repetition of that cycle over time conditions the body to subconsciously become the mind of insecurity. So then the person says, I am insecure. And whenever you say, I am anything, you're commanding your mind and body towards a destiny. So then most people's biology is, for the most part, their past. And so if you're not being defined by the vision of the future, some new possibility in your life, you're only left with the old circuitry in your brain and the old emotions of the past. So the question then is, can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the experience has already occurred. Now the latest research in neuroscience says you can change your brain just by thinking. So then as you begin to think about a new possibility and your brain begins to fire in new sequences and new patterns and new combinations, and you begin to plan your behaviors, and you begin to review in your mind, mentally rehearse who you're going to be in your life, the mere action of mental rehearsal begins to install the neurological circuits in your brain. Now your brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's in fact a map to the future. And if you were then to begin to emotionally embrace your future before it's made manifest, in other words, you're not waiting for your healing to feel wholeness. You're not waiting for your new relationship to feel love. You're not waiting for the mystical moment to feel awe. You're not waiting for your success to feel empowered. That's the old model of reality of cause and effect. In other words, the materialist the person who's waiting for their wealth to come to feel abundance, uh, they're living by that model of cause and effect. But the quantum model is about causing an effect, which means you begin to experience your own worthiness and your abundance before it occurs. You have to feel wholeness in order for your healing to occur. Uh, we have to feel love for ourselves and love for life in order for us to have love in our life. And so then to instruct people how to teach their body emotionally how that future could feel like before it's made manifest. If they do it properly, their body as the unconscious mind begins to believe it's living in that future reality in the present moment. And they're beginning to signal new genes in new ways that begins to change their body to look like the event has already occurred. So the process of change in the meditative model requires unlearning and relearning. It requires breaking the habit of the old self and reinventing a new self. What we say in neuroscience, pruning synaptic connections and sprouting new connections. Unfiring and unwiring and refiring and rewiring. 
uh, unmemorizing emotions that are stored in the body and then reconditioning the body to a new mind and to a new emotion. No longer signaling the same genes in the same way, but signaling new genes in new ways. Beginning to pull your energy out of the past and beginning to invest your energy into the future. What we're teaching people how to do is not to pray to have their prayers answered, but to get up from their meditations as if their prayers are already answered. Because when they're combining that clear intention of their future with that elevated emotion, they're literally changing their energy, they're changing their brain chemistry, they're changing the way their brain works, they're changing their genetic expression, they're changing their chemistry. They're literally becoming somebody else. And over and over again, when people do this, it may take them months to turn their disease around. But over and over again, we've seen this. They come back uh, to a certain level of awareness and the disease is no longer there. And it's almost like the disease existed in the old personality. They're literally someone else. And um, we've seen it enough times now to know that people reach a certain point with themselves where they feel so whole they feel so satisfied with who they are. They feel so happy with themselves and their lives that they could care less if they have the disease. And that's the moment it goes away over and over again.